More grace. This is yours truly, Prophet Karn, Pastor Karn, Overseer Karn. It really doesn't matter. But I am the senior pastor of Kingdom City Church, where our mission is to know God, activate people, and change cities. You are getting ready to watch a word that is going to be preached that I believe has the power to change your life. We're unapologetically a new covenant church. But we believe in what Jesus has already done and the finished work of Calvary. And because of that, it gives us the confidence to declare that we are the righteousness of God. We're right here on your screen. You should see a little uh, a subscribe button where you can subscribe to make sure that you stay in contact with us and know what we're doing. But I pray that you hear a word today where your life is changed. And keep on watching. And I promise you, if you watch it, watch it again, watch it again, sooner or later, you're going to come and try to be a part of us. So I love you. More grace. Take everything I don't want it. I don't need it. God, won't you take, come on.
Kamaya. I don't need I just want you a kashaba I just want you tell him Hello Basha I just want Elemando Masia Jesus, I just want you, I just want you.
just want Come on, lead it, tell it More than anything More than a house More than a car More than riches More than El Armando More than my future More than my dreams More than anything It's you I want One more time, sing it with me. Take everything, come on, say, take, come on. Come on. I don't need it. Take everything. Hey. Everything. Just want you. I just want you. Oh, Shabbat. I just want you. I just want you. Hiya. I just want you. I just want you. A couple of Shabandalo Mosa. Hello, Shabbat. Clap those hands for Jesus, everybody. Hallelujah. Clap those hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hook three people on the way down and tell them I'm excited about your future. Let me be a holy Habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Oh Lord, I long to know your glory. Come on, I want to offer the sacrifice. So feel the simple tear with your spirit. may be seated in the presence of the Lord. He's a good God. I want to be a, I want to have nothing in me that look like the devil. Jesus said the prince of this world cometh but he findeth nothing in me. Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried, tried and true. Some worshipers. For you. One time. We are 
exalt thee. I didn't say go up. Hey, we exalt. be seated. Hallelujah. Oh, he's Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Lift your hands one more time. Say, I exalt thee. Ah, yeah. I exalt thee. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Clap those hands for Jesus. We honor the Lord for his goodness toward us, and we're grateful for the word of the Lord that is being taught in this house and for where he's taking us. Look at somebody on the left and the right, say, I'm glad I'm saved, and I know I'm saved. Let's try that again with a little more confidence. Say, I'm glad I'm saved, and I know I'm saved. Anybody saved and know you're saved. I want to ask you something. I want to ask you something. If I'm, if I'm Mother Kelly's son, if I'm Mother Kelly's son and I get mad at her and leave the house and decide I don't want to go back there no more and I go and do what I want to do, okay, does that make me stop being her son? What if I start saying she ain't my mama? What about I don't want to fool with her no more? Because I, she's not my mother because of my words and what I say. She's my mama by DNA. When God accepted you into the beloved, all right, remember that. Go back to Hebrews chapter 6. I, I taught on it a little bit, then we're going to go to where I'm going. But I want to say this to you because sometimes, when I'm teaching, the teacher can tell when the students ain't getting it. And I know that just because y'all saying hallelujah, hallelujah, and shouting, praise Lord, ooh, that's good. I, I, that don't mean you got it. Amen. You can be shouting and running all around the church and ain't got nothing. So you, wanna, you want it to be rooted and grounded in you. What I was trying to get you to understand from the Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 passage, for it is impossible for those who were once in life. Somebody shout those. And have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, verse 5. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers, verse 6, of the age to come. Somebody shout, they. they. Come on, y'all. They. they. If they fall away to renew, somebody shout, them. them. Them again to repentance, sent somebody shout, they. they. All right. So notice he's dealing with a group of individuals who are in the church. And one theologian said it like this. These people were never uh, regenerated. They actually were quickened short of regeneration. So they got quickened. They heard the word. They, they were excited. 
uh, they even got happy. Go to Luke chapter 8, verse 12. Let me show you something before we go where we're going. But Luke chapter 8, verse 12 talks about those by the wayside are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and take the word out of their heart. Now, these people were in church. They heard the word, all right? But the Bible declares that it never took root. All right. Now, just because you're in here don't mean you here. Come on, come on, talk to me. All right? They take the word out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. But look at verse 13. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, shout. Take off running. That man preaching. Woo! Hear the word with joy, but you don't have no root. So you do believe for a wow. You believe for a wow. I've always communicated to you that everybody's wow is different. See, a lot of times we think because we've seen folk in church for 10 years, that means they saved. Just because you profess don't mean you possess. Because these people draw now unto me with their lips, but their what? Hearts are far from. So you can come in here and go through the motion. Judas went through the motion for three and a half years. Judas did. Did he, rape, did, did he cast out devils? Yes. yes. I'm talking about Judas. Yes. Did he cast out devils? Yes. Did he lay hands on the sick? Yes. Did he do miracles? Yes. Question, was he saved? No. no. Well, none of them saved. God couldn't live in them because their inside was filthy. They had a sin nature. And it took Jesus going to the cross to cleanse their bad nature so that God could get in them. He couldn't get in them as long as they was dirty. He could only walk with them, but he couldn't get in them. Now, the reason he said in verse, go back to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4, the reason he said it's impossible for those, all right? Come on, whoever back there. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, tasted the heavenly gift, become partakers of the Holy Spirit. Come on. And have tasted, get there before I'm there, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. If they fall away, to renew them again to repentance. The reason it's impossible for them is they have never reaped, they, they never, they've never had an encounter with him. It, it, it cannot mean that you can't return to God because if that's what it means, all backsliders are damned. then there could be no such thing as someone who backslides because people who backslide are people who had the Holy Ghost. Let, let's, forget, let, let's forget people. How many people in here, since you have been saved, have went contrary? Amen. Now, I ain't never went out there. That ain't my testimony. I always been hooked on in. Praise God. But I want you to understand that according to the word of God, if that means, if it's saying that a person who has tasted the word of God, who've experienced God, can't fall away, and if they do fall away, they bring Christ to an open shame, then I'm telling you, every backslider might as well go ahead and stay in the world. If that's what that means. So it can't mean that. That's why I want you all to understand when your family is not in church, it's easier for God to reach them than somebody who in church hearing it and rejecting it. See, some of you all are playing. You're, you're playing. You're just in here. You're hearing this word, but you're not allowing the word that I teach to take root. How do I know? Because ain't no fruit in your life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So he was talking to a group of people, Jews, who were not allowing themselves to come to perfection. That perfection was Christ. They was coming to church. They were hanging around the church. How many people know that just because you're in here don't mean you're saved? Going to church don't make you a Christian, just like standing in a garage don't make you a car. All right? 
So just because you're in here, it's not enough. You got to go on to perfection. What is perfection? The gospel. Except what Jesus did. So he lets you know that he's talking about them. Even if you get to verse 7, what lets you know that he's talking about them? For the earth with drinks and the rain that often comes upon it, bears herb useful for those by whom it is cultivated. Verse 8, receive blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and brine, it is rejected and near to being cursed. That can never be us. Because once I've accepted Jesus, I'm redeemed from the curse. Hallelujah to God. And I want you all to understand that I want to say this to you. I looked at some of our Sunday school lesson, and sometimes I know that we mean well in certain conversations, but I want you to hear me by the spirit of which I'm saying. I want you all to forget about having any conversation about sin. Forget it. Because you can't not become sin conscious talking about it. The more you talk about sin, you're going to be sin conscious. Now, I, 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 I want to qualify that statement. Everybody raise your hand. Say, say, prophet card. Come on, say it loud. Say it. Come on, say it loud. Because I want the whole internet to hit it. Prophet card. Hate sin. And he, and he ain't telling nobody, ain't telling nobody the, sin. the sin. All right, now, y'all said it. And y'all heard me say it. You repeated what I said. You are free. Okay. But I want to say to you all, if there's any conversation you want to have with the person who is using their freedom abusively, take them to Galatians, where he said, although you are free, don't use your freedom as an occasion to your flesh. That's the conversation you have. Let them, see, here's what I'm saying. How many people know that I, well, here's my testimony. I love being on the highway, and I like when it say 70, 75. <laughs> Woo! Because you know, 75 for me means 84. You can go about nine over, not ten, just nine. On the expressway, now don't do that on the, on the road. But yeah. When I see 50, that means, all right, let's put this thing in the 59. Okay, all right, but, but here's what I'm saying, then I'm going to where, where I'm going. Okay, but just because there are individuals who abuse the speed limit of 70, it doesn't cause the government to now say, I'm going to put it down to 30. You don't change the word because of certain individuals who abuse it. Don't worry about the abusers. God will deal with the abusers. You keep preaching the word. Yes, there'll be many who will hear this word. And of course, it's like anything. Anything that you learn, get new, get a revelation of, get an understanding of, you will use it as a mean. If, 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 see, I'm not trying to deal with the fruit. I'm trying to deal with the root. I'm trying to get a seed of righteousness rooted down in your belly. Because if I don't get the root, I can cut off the fruit but guess what? The fruit going to grow again because I never dealt with the root. I want you to understand that when when Jesus came in your heart, you were born of an incorruptible seed. And that seed is going to produce the... You ain't... Listen to me. Listen to me. You ain't got to sit back. If you plant a seed... Okay. You ain't got to do nothing but keep that seed in the right environment. Now, I want to say that to you. Some of you, it's not that the seed ain't planted. It's just you planted the seed in the wrong environment. Trees don't grow everywhere.
Amen. They are certain mac, mac, macadamia. Nut. You can't just say, I want to, I'm, I'm going to plant me a, mac, a macadamia tree, and I'm going to get me some macadamia seed and plant it in my backyard, and you're going to be mad 20 years later that you sat there and waited on it, and it never grew. Nothing was wrong with the seed. Something was wrong with the environment. It don't grow in North Carolina. Because the environment is not conducive for that to grow. Some of you, you are not growing because of your environment. You can't keep hanging around carnality and think you're going to become spiritual. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good matters. Your environment matters. That's why we come to church. That's why we hear the word. Right, listen to me. That's why we come. Every time you look in the scripture, in the Bible, every time you look in the scripture, when Jesus kept showing up, all in the scripture, he kept showing up. Read your Bibles. After he rose from the dead, every time he had an encounter with the people, it was on the first day of the week. Every Sunday, he, had a, I mean, he kept waiting. He appear him on Sunday. Then you see a pause. Then he meets him again on Sunday. Then he meets him again on Sunday. Now, what is he trying to tell us? He was showing us a precedence that the reason we are coming here on Sunday morning is to be fed. You should come in here and you should learn more about Jesus. I told you all, Romans chapter 1, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For therein, that's Romans 1, 17, therein is the righteousness of God revealed. What's revealed? What's revealed? What's revealed? When you hear me preach, what I should be revealing to you is not your problem. Because you already know you got problems. See how y'all sitting here acting all deep. I'm talking about that person next to you speaking in tongues, worshiping just now. They got problems. Look down your road. Say, I got problems. You don't come here to hear what's wrong with you. I don't come to talk about you. I come to talk about him. Because he said, if I be lifted up. Glory! Hallelujah to God. Yes, I'll draw all men unto me. You better lift up Jesus. Ain't about you. Not about what's wrong with you. All right? And see, it's very hard when you go to teaching this because I tell you, Romans chapter 3, verse 27, when you teach grace and you teach what Jesus did at the, at, at, upon the new covenant, it, it bothers people because you don't have nothing to boast about. When I hear Jesus did everything, well, what about me? What about I got to do? See, that's the question. Where is boasting? Well, how am I going to brag on something I'm doing? He said, guess what? It's been excluded. How about Sikiosha? By what law? Of what? No. By the law of faith. Abraham believed God. And it was imputed to him as what? Righteousness. Say, I am. I am. Come on louder. I am. I am. Righteous. righteous. Are you righteous with a cigarette in your hand? Yes. Don't change it. Don't care who in the world getting mad at you and tell you that man preaching you crazy. I'm telling you, your righteousness has nothing to do with your works. Brother Khan, I just got high. You are righteous, high man. <laughs> Don't let nobody change your mind about that. Keep confessing it. Keep declaring it. And I promise you, if you keep declaring it, he will change your want tos. Ele <laughs> masokosha. You will lose your desire to do what you used to do. Say amen to that. Amen. Keep on declaring. You, you know why? You know why that stronghold keeps a hold on you? You know why? Because the enemy gets you to start identifying yourself 
by what you're doing. So you can't be free because you begin to say, I'm an addict. I this. And he can't fight your confession. See, that's why I be trying to get, I don't care what you're feeling in your body. See, y'all don't get it. You be sitting up telling me how you feel. As long as the enemy can keep you saying you sick, you in pain, you depressed, I'm sad, I'm this, he got you. Because no matter how powerful God is, he cannot work or override your confession. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Say, I am healed. Good God, Moha, let me calm down. They told me to be nicer when I teach. Told me to smile. Okay. Say, I am healed. Say, I am holy. Say, I am righteous. Don't change that. I said, something, I said something in church while I was there in uh, Sylvania. I said, it don't take faith for me to say I'm righteous when I'm doing right. You know, when I'm, when I'm doing, when I, when, you, know, you know, you be saved for a good week. Now, some of y'all, some of you think you can be perfect. And if you think that, you already deceived. You can't. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, you, you just can't. Because the person who says you're perfect, I have a question. What about your thought of worry? If you ever doubt, you're in sin. Because whatsoever is not a faith. Worrying is a sin. Doubting is a sin. I always tell, I always tell, man, I ain't never cheated on my wife. I tell you, you never cheat on your wife bodily. You ain't never cheated bodily. But you ain't tell me you ain't never looked at nobody. Say amen. So I, I want you to let that register in your spirit. I said, when, when I'm doing right, you know, I've been on a fast for a good two weeks, praying, seeking the Lord, on five, I got, ooh, I know I'm saved today. All right, and you walk out and say, I'm righteous. That don't take faith. That don't take faith. Because you feel like you got some evidence behind it. What take faith is when I know I'm wrong. And in spite of me being wrong, I still confess. I, now that takes faith. Because the enemy is telling me while I'm saying it, I'm a hypocrite. He ain't never told y'all that. He ain't never, he ain't never told you, you lying, you ain't righteous. Say, I am righteous. Will you say that loud? I'm black and I'm proud. Come on, say, I am righteous. You need to know that. So Hebrews 6 is dealing with people who never accepted. They got around church, but never accepted Jesus. Not even talking to you, right? But then he gets to verse 9, and he lets you know he's talking to you. In verse 9, he say, but beloved. He was talking about them, those, they. But when he got ready to talk about you, he called you somebody to say, I'm beloved. I'm beloved. Oh, look at your neighbor next to you and tell him, I'm loved of God. Find you somebody that really got a revelation of his love. Look at somebody else and say, God is crazy about me. What lets you know that he wasn't talking about us is he said, but beloved, we are confident of what? Come on, it's right there on the, on the scripture for y'all to read. But beloved, we are confident of what? Concerning what? Yes, things that accompany what? He said, I'm not talking about you. I was talking about them. He said, but when it come to you, I got a better covenant upon better promises. Now, I'm saying the things that I'm saying, and the reason I'm coming after these things and attacking them the way I'm doing is I'm trying to remove all the cobwebs of tradition that are, that, that are hindering the assurance of your faith. I don't want you to be a Christian 
around here wondering, is your salvation hanging in the balance? Save on Tuesday. Mess up Tuesday night. God rejects me on Wednesday. Now I got to perform and get back good in order for him to talk to me again on Thursday. I can never serve a God who's always kicking me out. Lay hands on yourself and say, God's in love with me. Love with say, I'm saved and I know I'm saved. I'm saved, I know I'm saved. All right? And I, I, it takes work. It takes me being patient. It takes me talking to you. And I don't want you to think I'm bothered at all by your questions because anytime you're hearing something new, I, I'm, I'm coming against years of teaching. Uh, I'm coming against years of teaching that was sincerely wrong. Amen. Right. Amen. And so you go to ask the question, my God, what, I mean, my mama was wrong, my pastor was wrong, and, and, it's, and it's hard for you to see that because they were so sincere. Are you understanding? But you can be sincere, and I, I want to say this to you, uh, people, you know, we're New Covenant, we're grace people, but, you know, I, I think that was Pastor Dollar said when he was here, he said, grace people got to be gracious. Yeah. See, you don't want to, under the New Covenant, take on the spirit of the Pharisee yeah. and be a New Covenant Pharisee. Uh-oh, y'all quiet now. Yeah, you got to be patient with those, and the reason you got to be patient is because you remember when you was like that. Come on, come on, come on. You remember when you was judgmental. Y'all ain't never been judgmental since you've been saved. Right? So you have to be patient and understand that they might not get it and they might not get it quickly because I'm going, it's going through years of, of things that people have been taught. It takes work, but it's worth it. And I'm telling you that teaching this message, uh, it, 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 you ain't, you, you're not going to have too many friends teaching this because it's, it puts you like Jesus. But it's worth it when you see people getting free. And it's causing people to come into a stronger relationship with God. And I'm telling y'all, whether you believe this or not, some of the most rebellious people you meet are those who grew up under legalism. Ask the pastor kids. Amen. I got preacher's kids in here. They'll tell you they was a mess. Had rules, regulations. Mama and daddy was strict on them. That didn't make them live right. That just taught them how to do stuff. Amen. Just because just, just people are strict on you, just because somebody tell you not to do something, that don't make you not do it. Amen. Every crook, every crook was told not to do something. Amen. And they found the easier way to do what they've been doing. Amen. You look at our church, hold my shot. You look at our young men, you look at, uh, oh, uh, uh, you look at most of our young men who don't have a revelation of their identity, want to be girls. They started in church. They wasn't in the world all day. They, they was right in church, dancing with the church mother, and start acting like one. You give people rules, you tell folk what not to do. All they're going to do is strengthen something in them to make them do it more. We have to make sure that we don't change the gospel, Christianity, into rules and regulations, just like they did under the law. We got to make sure that we do it in the spirit of Christ. Now, again, I'm going somewhere. Now, that doesn't mean that there's no standard. That's still a standard, but your standard got to be connected to grace. 
Do, do you understand that? It's, 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 it, you don't enforce the rule and teach people to love each other. To command. Love God, love you. If I do something that's going to hurt you, I won't do it. That's the new covenant law. If I eat meat and it offends my brother, guess what? Don't eat it. Now I'm trying to get you all to understand, don't indulge your flesh. You are free, but don't indulge your flesh on either side. I'm telling you, don't indulge your flesh on both sides. I'm saying don't, see, that's most of y'all's problem when it comes to your emotions. You only know how to deal with bad emotions, but you don't even have balance with good emotions. Some of y'all laugh too much. So you got to know, you got to know when you're laughing too much. Because the Bible talk about jesting and jiving. You understand? So sometimes you may be on this side of your emotion and you say, well, don't, uh, you know, you understand not to cry. You understand not to complain. You understand not to catch an attitude. But then you got to have somebody in your life to say, all right, now, nah, it wasn't that funny. Now bring that on in. It, it is not that funny. You need to calm your little hips down. In Jesus' name. I love you. On both sides. Because a false balance is an abomination. So you have to have balance of your emotions on both sides. Amen. It, 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 you, 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 you cannot like somebody and you can overly love somebody. Uh oh, quiet now here now. See, you, we just deal with what, we just deal with the person who when they walk away from the pain, oh, you got to get over it. Okay, but you need to teach people how to be disciplined in love. Amen. I can't make it without you. Too much. <laughs> Too much. And so when you meet somebody who don't act like you, you think they don't love you because you've only seen love unmeasured. So when you see somebody a head over heels about you, you immediately, well, I know what love is because I done been in love before. So you have the same expectation that you are because you've never been taught how to have a measuring stick in your love life. I'm preaching whether y'all like it or not. So because they don't want to talk to you all the time, they don't love you. Ain't that much talking in the world. Ain't that much breathing in the world. We on the phone. How you doing? Good. What, it's, you're going to talk for so long. How you doing? Good. What you did today? They're going to tell you. They're going to come back. What you did today? Here's the next question. What you ate today? Okay. You're going to talk about what you ate today. When you get done, you're going to talk. After a while, guess what you're going to be on the phone doing? on FaceTime, watching each other watch something. Y'all on FaceTime, watching each other watch TV. I just, I just, I just want to be around you. I, I just, you ain't got to say nothing. Just want, I'm telling you, it's cute. It, it, whatever you want to call it. What they gonna call it, okay? But nothing grows in the shade. You have to give space. Now I, I'm telling you, there can be there can be both. I'm telling you, catch the balance. There can be too much space, and there can be not enough space. Space is such a big deal that America spend billions of dollars going into outer space. They're spending money on trying to define space. 
That's how important space is. So everything has to have a measurement, okay, in, in everything, in everything. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong. How many people know when somebody die, it's normal to grieve? But not for no five years. Five years later, every time their birthday come around, you crying. There's a problem. No, 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 no. Now, see, you, prophet, that's insensitive. No, I'm trying to teach you that it shouldn't be 20 years down the road and you, you see their birthday. Oh, I can't take it. This is just not a good day for me. That's unhealthy. And they have counselors to let you know, all right, it's time to move on. Can't be depressed forever. Can't be sad. Now that's on both sides. Are you understanding that? So you have to have balance. Don't indulge your flesh. Don't indulge your appetite. Yes, I'm free, but I don't use my freedom as a liberty to my flesh. I mean, just because of, just because a man gets out of prison and he and, and he free, and let's say they expunge his record and and give him a pardon. He ain't so free that he can go to killing folk. Right, right, right. They don't put your little happy hips right back in jail. Right, right. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I want you to understand that I'm teaching what I'm teaching, but I want you to catch the balance of it by the Spirit. But people, be, be, people believe in freedom. Uh, uh, most time you talk to people, they'll say they believe in freedom in God. They'll say they believe in no condemnation, but they still try to find a way to add works. And, and, and they'll use the scripture, all right, Prophet Khan, you can have faith, but faith without works is dead. Now, that's the scripture they use. Good scripture, but it's out of context. Let's go to James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 24. Look at what the word of God says in James chapter 2, verse 24. You see then that a man is what? By what? Woo! That's scary. Because we've been teaching justified by faith. But James said, you see then that a man is justified by what? And not by faith. So it seems like here, something is off. Because James 2.24 said, you see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. But the justification that James is dealing with, he's not talking about justified before God. He's talking about justified before men. You missed that. Men, look at your works. Let your light so shine before that others may see your good works. Glorify God. The justification that James is dealing with is not a justification before men. I'm not a justification before God, but a justification before men. Now go to Romans chapter 4, verse 1. Look at what it says. Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the what? Now, here's Paul having a conversation with the Jews in Rome. Abraham found something that made him powerful. I mean, made him abound in life. Put him in a position that he had the favor of God on his life and caused God to be so moved by him that even his descendants are blessed because of his belief found out something that caused God to not just bless him, but to bless all his children just because they came through Abraham's womb. They didn't do nothing. All they did was be born and their father's Abraham, and it put them in a position to be blessed. Now watch what Romans chapter 4 verse 2 said. Look at the next verse. 
For if, now watch this. It's going to look like a contradiction. For if Abraham was justified by he had something to but go back to James 2.24 so you can get it. Now Paul said Abraham can boast but it ain't going to be before God. It said but then you look at James 2.24 it said, you see then that a man is justified by what? Martin Luther, one of the fathers of the Reformation movement, didn't even believe that the book of James should be in the Bible. Now, I don't agree with it, but he didn't even believe it should be in the Bible. He actually called it a straw epistle. And the reason he felt like that is he felt like James 2.24 was contradicting Romans chapter 4, verse 2. It's not a contradiction because we know by the Holy Ghost that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof. All right? So we know that all of us inspired, but one thing we have to do is do the homework so we can keep it. Somebody shout in te- context. Now, James couldn't have been contradicting Paul because James was actually written before Romans. But what you need to understand is Paul is dealing with justification before God. And James is dealing with justification before men. Let me help you get it. Paul deals with the root. James deals with the fruit. Paul is dealing with justification before God. So he said in verse 2 of James chapter 4, verse 2, look at what he's, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 4, verse 2, look at what he says again. He said in Romans 4 and 2, he said, For if Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. Let's read the next verse. For what does the scripture say? Abraham did what? What did he do? What did he do? And it was accounted to him for? Now look at the next verse. Now to him who the wages are not counted as but as if I bless you because of your works it puts me in a position that I'm going to owe you. I'm your creator, and I am never going to be in debt to my creation. Are you listening? So if you work for something, God owes you. Are you getting that? But you can't work for this. No matter how good you work, you're going to always fall short. Because the law don't give no compliments. If you break one, you break. But God doesn't want to owe you. He wants to deal with you according to grace. So the only way I can bless you without ever owing you is giving you everything I give you based on you not earning it. Undeserved, unmerited favor. Look down your wall and tell them, you don't deserve nothing you have. Now that ain't the mindset we was taught. You got folk be going to God, telling God about how they live. Lord, I don't do this. 
Lord, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I've been keeping myself. I've been holy before you. And I know you're going to move for me because of how I'm living. He looked at you and said, filthy. He's not impressed. It's a great testimony for men. But it does not affect anything between you and God. Are you understanding that? Because remember, the law doesn't understand do your best. You can't, the law ain't about doing your best. You have to keep it perfectly. Matthew chapter 5, I don't want to get into it, but the Beatitudes is not new covenant. It's really an extension of the law. A lot of people think the Beatitudes is, is the new rules for the new covenant. It can't be. It's really an extension of the old covenant. It's really add known showing you deeper things about it. Because notice it was on that sermon where he said, if your right hand offend thee. Now we know nobody in here who think you keeping the law is doing it. Because you got hands. And you know you done did wrong with one of your hands. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Not just the right hand. You don't, I mean, you be walking in church with noobs. It say, if your right eye offend thee. So the law doesn't understand doing your best. The law says you have to keep it completely. If not, you come under condemnation. You can't just do some of the law. You got to do all of it. And if you don't do all of it, you are under the curse, you are under condemnation, and you are under death. Somebody told me that they, they say you have no respect for the law. I said, as a matter of fact, People under the new covenant actually have the greatest respect for the law because we're saying you have to keep it perfectly. So y'all miss that. See, the person under grace actually has more respect than the person who say you got to keep the law because the people who say they got to keep the law are just saying do your best. We're not saying do your best. We're saying that you have to keep it perfectly, and because it's so holy, we can't even do it. That's how much we honor the law. Are you understanding that? So everything that God does in your life, he's going to do it. Somebody shout, by grace. by grace. All right, so the law don't understand doing your best. Look at the next verse. I'm almost done. But to him who what? 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 Now here you are trying to add works. And he said, but to him who does not work, but believes on him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for what? The only way that he can justify the ungodly was at the cross. It was the cross that releases him to be righteous. And he is not merciful in making you righteous. He's righteous in making you righteous. Okay, you missed that. I told him this the other day. I said, you have to understand, God is perfect in every way. Okay. The universalists want to talk about his love. But you can't just deal with God's love because he ain't just love. He also holy. So in teaching, 
you have to find a way to talk about his love without violating his holiness. But then you got to talk about his holiness without violating his love. Because he is altogether lovely. So how can I be holy and righteous at the same time? How, how can I be holy and loving? If I love you, I can't judge you. I can't because I love you. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. It's not puffed up. It's proud. It's patient. So if I love you, I can't. The wages of sin is there. But if I love you, I can't do that to you. But if I'm holy, I can't let it go unpunished. Gotta have both. Well, how am I going to have both? I'm going to show you. For God so loved that he yeah. stop. So sending Jesus was his love. That's mercy. Why you send Jesus? Because I love you. For God so loved that he yeah. his only uh-oh. But how how you going to get the holy part out? Okay. What I'm going to do is I love you so much that the judgment that you are supposed to receive, I'm going to send my son to take it in your place. And if you put your faith in what he did, I'll call you righteous. And it's not my mercy that made you righteous, but I'm actually righteous in making you righteous because I can't judge. Okay, th this is why, this is why. Hanamoshai. On the cross, ah! I just got a fax. On the cross was the body of Christ. On the cross was the body of Christ. On the cross was the body of Christ. The body of Christ has already been judged. The reason he can't judge me is because I am the body you're not getting that. I'm the body of Christ. He can't judge that body and then judge me because that would be double jeopardy because he judging the same body twice. Did, did you understand that? So say I am righteous. Say I am righteous. I am righteous. My time about up. One more scripture. Now notice what he says. But to him who does not work. To him who what? To him who what? Now here you are. I'm in here teaching. God love you. You are justified. Void of your work. And somebody always going to try to come and tell you. Yeah, but but you but you gotta but you gotta but you gotta okay you gotta do this now you know and that's good before men but not before God that's good teaching give me Ephesians chapter two Ephesians chapter two verse eight For by, Grace. for by, Grace. for by, Grace. you have been Grace. through, Grace. keep going, Grace. that not of yourself, it is the, gift of somebody say it's a, gift. it's a gift, say it's a gift. it's a gift, now guess what, guess what, guess what, not only is grace the gift, faith is a gift, yeah. you couldn't come, Unless he gave you 
Faith took off. Now always remember, and I'm, I'm going to throw this out here. When God says that, whenever someone says you are saved, always remember, saved is only talking from eternity. Okay, you missed that. You're in time. So when you be talking about some, well, that person was in church, but then they left and decided they didn't want to be with God. Okay, that didn't shock God. It shocked you. So even though they were saying it, God knew they were never saved. Because saved is he who endures. Uh-oh. That's Matthew 24, 13. Give, give me that. Give me, give me Matthew 24, 13. Matthew 24, 13. Look at what it says. It says in Matthew 24, but he who, he who, he who, to the what shall be saved. So when you say right now, that you are saved. It is really a declaration of faith. Why? Because the end ain't here. Now, but God in eternity can see you drunk, high, living crazy. And he in heaven saying, she saved. But the other one, but the only reason he can say that is because he done already seen your end. Yeah, he declares your end from the beginning. Hallelujah, thank God. Yes, Lord. Okay. Do you understand that? So when you say you saved now, that's why you got to keep confessing it and keep declaring it. Seeing we have the spirit of faith. Huh? We believe, therefore we speak. Say, I am saved. My God, I don't care where I'm at. People ask me, how you doing today? Saved. How you feel today? Say, but how you doing? Say. People we want you to give them carnal lap, but baby, I'm saved. I got to keep telling myself that. Because I messed up right before you asked me that, and the devil tried to tell me I wasn't. But I want to tell the devil I'm saved. And I want to let the devil know I'm, 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 I'm sticking with God. No matter how messed up I get, I ain't leaving God. The race ain't given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. But to him that endures to the end. Saints used to sing a song that said, it ain't about how high you jump. It's how straight you walk when you come down. My time up. We're saved by grace. That not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Not of works. Ephesians 2 and 8, it is the gift of God. Look at verse 9. Not of works. Less what? Not of works. Less anyone should boast. But here go verse 10 and I'm done. For we are his workmanship. Now you got to get, you got to see what that means. That word workmanship in the Greek is poema. It's where we get our English word poem. You are God's poem. 
You are his love story. Every time your life goes through a mountain and a valley, it ain't nothing but imagery to the poor. Y'all ain't talking back to me. I'm his workmanship. He's writing a love story about me. And one day you're going to read my story. If anyone should ever write my life story, for whatever reason there might be, he'll be there. Between each line of pain and glory. Shake your neighbor and say, Jesus is the best thing. Poema, poem. That word actually means, it actually means in the Greek, poetry in motion. Tell your neighbor, you God's poem. I felt something try to come in my voice just then. I don't want to do that. I want to teach this. Tell somebody else, you God's poem. For we are his, Ephesians 2 and 10, we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good work. Now, he's telling you that when I saved you, I lay velidos. I clundala klusna. I have created you for good works. You don't have to try to do good works. Because of the root of the spirit that's in you. Something about your new nature is going to make you do good even when you want to do bad sometimes. I ain't got nobody to be honest in here. But a lot of times you wanted to do what you wanted to do. But something in you wouldn't let you do what you wanted to do. And that's confirmation that I belong to God. Tell somebody, I belong, to God. I belong to God. I gotta go. I am his masterpiece. He's writing a story of my life. I really don't wanna do that. Look at somebody and say, God's writing a story about me. So many times, people put the book down in the wrong chapter. Ain't that the truth? How many times have you read a book and the book got so frustrating that you just say, I don't want to read no more of that? How many times have you been looking at a movie and the movie was about to make you mad and you just walked out and say, I don't want to see that? But tell, tell your neighbor, keep on reading. You got the wrong neighbor. You got to find somebody that'll grab your neighbor and say, just keep on reading. One day, somebody looked at Jesus and they thought the story was over. But I heard the psalmist declared, that's not how the story is. Three days later, he rose, he rose again. Grab your neighbor. Rock them and shake them. I got to close y'all. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. And say, neighbor, I may not be everything that I want to be, but I'm so glad I'm not what I used to be. Don't give up on me. You need to find another neighbor. Say, neighbor, up on me. Keep on watching. 
keep on looking at me. It ain't going to end like this. He that has become a good work, yeah, he going to perform it. Shout glory, shout glory another time. I got to close, but grab you one more neighbor and say, neighbor, when you see me in the sanctuary, don't judge me. Every now and then, I might mess up. Every now and then, I might get angry. Every now and then, I might get frustrated. If you catch me at the wrong place and at the wrong time, I might do something that you don't agree with. But please, I got to get that out. I still ain't hit it like I want to. Please, please, please be patient with me. God, he ain't through with me. Just keep on watching me. When it's all said and done, I'm going to be a poem that's going to be worth a lot of money. When God gets done, I'm going to be a painting that God can show off. When it's all said and done, I'm gonna be, ah, yes sir, everything he called me to be. Grab one more neighbor and say, neighbor, you can be confident of this very thing. He, he that has begun a good work, he gonna perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God told me to tell somebody, hold your head up. You may not be perfect right now. You might have a habit right now. You might have an addiction right now. You might be dealing with a stronghold right now. You might be in a bad season. Your poem might have a comma, but I come to tell you, keep on reading. Don't give up on me. God's going to use me. He's going to use me. I am a miracle in the making. I'm a short story in the making. Don't give up on me. I got to get out of here. But grab your neighbor for the last time and say, neighbor, keep on reading. Many on the affliction of the righteous. Come on, turn me up in my monitor. But, yeah, but God, he shall deliver him out of them all. You need to tell somebody, I'm coming out of this. I won't be in this web for too long. I won't be in this place for too long. Something about to happen. The stronghold that I've been dealing with about to break off of me. The habits that's been on me about to get off of me because I am his workmanship. I am God's poem. I am the righteousness of God. Say, ah! feel like preacher run the five people and say don't give up don't give up don't give up come on come on turn up the keyboard in the monitors man don't give up hey I feel faith in here somebody about to hold your head up there is therefore now condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh God sent forth his son 
in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in those who live according to the spirit grab your neighbor and say I'm saved by his power divine say to do life sublime life now is sweet and my joy is complete for us To scream something just broken. Hey. 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 Oh, I'm saved. Hey. 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 I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. You need to know it. You need to know that. Every person in here, I know there are people in this ministry. who use their liberty as an occasion to the flesh. It's okay. I'm not going to change the message. You know what it's going to do? It's going to separate the wheat from the tear. It'll separate the sheep from the goats. He told you, let the wheat and the tear go together. While you sitting in here trying to let the wheat, he's saying at the end, I'm going to do the separate. You are saved by grace know it why I need you to know that so you can talk to God so you can never go in prayer wondering is God holding something against you look down your arm and tell him God ain't mad at you if this message ain't doing nothing else for you it ought to be strengthening your relationship with God you ought to be able to go in prayer and say, Lord, I'm jacked up. Lord, I, got, I see this area in my life. I know you're not judging me. Of course. And, 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 and again, it's, it's just like somebody you love. You know that they'll love you in spite of you, but you don't use that love in spite of you to keep on being in spite of you. Yeah. See, that's what y'all want. You want somebody to love you in spite of you, you know, just love me. Just, just put up with me. If you love me, just, okay, okay. But I love you in spite of you, but love me. That with you knowing you're doing something that's hurting me, that you're willing to judge it. I don't judge it. You judge it. Judge yourself so you won't be judged with the world. 
chasing him. I love you. Chasing him. I love you so much that I'm chasing you. Why are you chasing me? Why do you ever say anything to me when something wrong with me? Because I love you. And I want to see you be the best you. Amen. Every time I sit down with people and talk to them, I, I try to get the message across that I'm saying what I'm saying to you because I love you. I, no judgment. Sometimes I deal with things in the church and people take the message and they'll say, well, pastor, I thought we were under new covenant. We are. God, God love you. And you justified before God. But you ain't justified before these people. So that's why I have to sit you down sometime. Not for justification before God, but because of the way you look in front of the people. Amen. Now, if I don't know, I don't know. I said, well, you got to sit everybody down. I'm going to have to sit down to everybody that I know. If I don't know, I can't deal with it. But if I know, I'm going to address it. Amen. So hear me by the Spirit. You have a strong relationship with God. Nothing you can do to separate yourself from his love. I was reading the scripture that said, he said, everyone I've given, all that I've given, all my father's given me. He said, none of them. He said, I'm not going to lose none of them. He said, nobody can pluck out. I said, well, Lord, what about me? He said, aren't you a body? Even I can't stop me if God gave me to him. You missed that. See, the people who are saved was a gift. You were given to Christ. God gave you to Jesus. And the Bible declares that he's going to give you back to God. That he might present it unto himself. A glorious church. Well, if God gave you to Jesus, you can't even stop you from being what God called you to be. He said, no man, no things present, no things to come, height, depth, any other creature shall separate me. Well, Brother Khan, what if I don't believe? He said in 2 Timothy 2, 13, he said, if we don't believe, he still remains faithful. Why? Because he can't deny himself. Well, Prophet God, you telling me even if I lose my faith in my Christian journey, that you still got me? Yeah, because I'm in you. If I deny you, I'm denying myself. Because I put my spirit on the inside of you. Well, what I got to do? Receive. That's so hard. He said, let us labor to enter into rest. That seems so backward. How am I working to rest? Because you've been, you're fighting a system of having to perform. And now you hear a preacher telling you, just receive. And it's a struggle for you just to receive that God loves you. But slap somebody on the left and the right and say, Jesus loves me. If you're in this room and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know him in the pardon of your sin, we offer Christ. If you're in this room, you're not saved, get up here quickly. You don't know him. Come to Jesus. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. If you're not sure that if you were to die, heaven would be your home, get up here. We are, you're not saved. Come on. Backslider. Come on. Need a church home. Get on up here. New life. So come. 
Say, come on. Come on. Come on to Christ. To Christ. Look at some out left and the right real quick. Say, are you saved? And know you're saved. Wait on the answer. Wait on an answer. Look at him on the left and the right. Say, are you in right standing with the Lord? 